Swanson. Um, she was anything that you needed to do. A, one of the many volunteer efforts that Barb participated in as a loyal and involved member of this community. So on behalf of the Celeste Bay Music oh. Festival, oh. we have this plaque oh. for you. Yeah. Come on out.
Barb's kind of a mentor to me because I think I have never seen anybody age more gracefully than Barb Anderson. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. She's beautiful. She's engaged. She's she's alive. No, she's oh. <laughs> that's one of the stories I wasn't going to tell. <laughs> anyway, I just want to tell tell you about two things about Barb that I think were really fun and a, a, a large volume of things that were fun. Uh, one of them was when she was having a lot of her health problems here recently, she was taking trips back and forth and she was worried about herself. I mean, we were all worried about her. We didn't know quite what was going on and how bad it was going to be. And she wanted me to know that everything was taken care of and I could have all her beautiful clothes to wear. <laughs> Not a problem. We've had this discussion many times. But then when everything, turned, reps. when everything turned around and everything looked good and everything was really great, she said, I bought a whole bunch of new outfits. You're not getting a thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was one of them. And the other one is a story about when she contacted a lot of our businesses for ads. The first year we decided to sell ads in our program, Barb took it real seriously. And she went out there, and I'm telling you, she sold more ads double than anybody else sold. I mean, she was out there. She knows everybody. They know her. And I said to one of the businesses, I said, wow, I can't believe it. Oh wait, she's directing traffic here. Yeah, Mary and the guys are right there. There. Okay, now we got that. Or did I say? I knew. All right. Uh, and so I went up to one of them and asked him. I said, I can't believe it. Everybody that Barb Anderson contacted for an ad bought an ad. Everybody. I don't have that record. How? I don't know how she was going to do that. How did she do it? And I said, why did you buy an ad? He said, you know Barb. I was afraid. Not <laughs> You got them, Barb, any way you get them, as I say, it's good. Well, uh, my story's a little bit different. Um, if you know Barb at all, you know that she can say some very interesting things. <laughs> do some very interesting things. Well, I had uh, fairly recently retired from investment banking. And we were fortunate enough that my number one client, uh, some people from the East Coast, came out to visit us. <laughs> and very, very conservative <laughs> people from the East Coast. And so they were at our house, and Barb happened to come over and invited us up with great cordiality to her house, which is just, you know, up the street from ours. So I took my very conservative clients up there, and Barb was showing them around the house and took them into her bedroom, and then oh proceeded to tell them about her vibrator chair. <laughs> a, and, and of course, one of the reasons she was so proud of this chair is that she just put a new vibrator in it, and she said it was a very exciting and interesting chair to be <laughs> So, she asked my friend Susan, who uh, I will not give any last names here. So, Barb said, well, you should sit down in the chair. <laughs> so she sits down in the chair, and of course it's going up. It's vibrating, and Susan says, oh my! <laughs> this is really very special. <laughs> They always say to say hello to the vibrator Charlie. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah. Now you've got your grandchildren sitting in there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a chair that I bought at uh, Sharper Image years and years ago. And I've gotten chairs for all the kids the same way. And it's so good. It does your back and it does your rump and it does everything. And so my grandson, the one that I had, I just loved. And I had it all redone when I left Hawaii because it was all rusted inside. <laughs> well used. Uh -huh. and, <laughs> and I brought it from Hawaii to here. And that was the chair that your folks had. Then my grandson came, and I think he used it too often. <laughs> but it did finally break down, and I. It's gone. I'll, I'll, I'll I'm going to get new ones. Yeah. 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 It's a good one. Jeff wants to know where it is. <laughs> Did you donate it? Good yeah. will. Good will. <laughs> Habitat. Habitat for you. So do we have any and more? I have a little story. Oh. It's not quite like the chair. <laughs> but we had an interesting ride with Barb down in Tucson when we were visiting a couple years ago for Thanksgiving. And Marty Lynch was driving us around showing us That's the terrible. parks of Tucson. That's <laughs> terrifying. That's my mother's. <laughs> we survived. Oh, yeah, as you say. Barb, thank you for sitting in the front seat with Marty. <laughs> I didn't hear what she said. She said thank, thank you, you for oh, <coughs> What did Barb do other than stay in the crash position? <laughs> A medical professional who would know better. Well, she, I think she kind of nudged Marty back over the right side of the line. Oh, <laughs> she oh. Right, and then she said you nudged him over the right side of the line. My mother, uh, the, the rest of this is my mother who gave up driving at 91, uh, took out a barrier and a palm tree in Tucson. <laughs> now, I want to I tell you that when this happened, we were waiting for mother to hit, you know, like a school bus full of hemophiliacs or something. We knew that she would kill somebody. But the palm tree was sort of interesting because she got a uh, speeding ticket. <laughs> so we took out the whole thing. She shook out the entire barrier, the tree, the entire thing, and then she wanted to find a new car. So that was the message. So this was very shortly before that they, mother took them to show them to Tucson. Connie kind of was like, I'll be okay. I didn't know it was a cruise. <laughs> well, the next nice story about Tucson that I can tell you is... They're still talking about you. <laughs> I'm going to talk about All right. Yeah. Is uh, Bob Lenish? Yes. Um, in 1952, 1952, I lived in Tucson, Arizona, and <clears throat> um, I really loved Tucson. I had moved from Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, which was uh, what I'm going into, the snow and all the rest of it. Uh, repeating. <laughs> and moved into uh, Tucson, Arizona. And one of my many friends there, um, I just I was a nurse, and worked for um, uh, Tucson Medical Center. And one of my friends was a piano player. Now, how many years would this be since then? 61. 62 years later, 62 years later, this same man is playing the piano at the Arizona Inn. And Barb and her mom oh knew him well. And he remembered her. Yeah. Oh, Why would he? <laughs> and so the, my first night there, where do they take me but to the Arizona Inn? And here's this guy sitting at the piano. <laughs> I, I, it was just, it, 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 it was deja vu. I loved it. We had more fun, got together. We still keep in touch with each other. 
he still so plays the piano at Arizona Inn. And the punchline is, he says to me, is she still married? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking a trip to Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, and maybe fortunately, I don't know, uh, in all my life, I've only been married seven, uh, 11 seven years. Seven times? <laughs> 11 years. Oh, and that I was seven oh, times. Yeah, <laughs> no. Uh, my first husband died in World War II. And so I stayed single until I was 54. And then I fell in lust. <laughs> Every woman at 54 should fall in lust. <laughs> and I met a very... Um, interesting man oh, sure. who was a musician, and that's where I got my musician uh, interest in more than anything else. And unfortunately, um, uh, pancreatic cancer took him in four years. Wow. So I never got married again. That's the Lauer. I dropped Lauer, everybody. I'm going to Montana. It's just Barbara Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want like that anymore. <laughs> so it, uh, I had an extremely interesting life as a, a nurse and um, Ended up, I think you all know, as CEO of Kaiser for the Hawaiian Islands. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, for a little old three-year uh, Catholic hospital nurse to go from, from that kind of education to a master's in, in uh, business and, mm -hmm. and run a, a whole island for Kaiser. Um, has been a great trip, and I've loved it, and I've had fun, and lots of wonderful memories, including the snake dress. Can you say a few words about the snake dress? Yeah, yeah, a lot of people don't know about the snake yeah, dress. Has anybody seen the snake dress? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Before, you, before she tells you about the snake dress, I had it printed at our local Walgreens, <laughs> and I went to pick it up. It's the largest most exotic version you can print in Lincoln City when you put it up. And the guy says to me, who is this? And I said, oh, it's a friend of mine. And, you know, she's 88 years old. He said, well, you know, do you think we could hang it here or copy it? And I said, why? He says, because we want people to believe she shops here. <laughs> today, those that are alive, I, I beat them all. <laughs> Good living. <laughs> and a beer for breakfast. Absolutely. Absolutely. And a beer for breakfast. And a wine at dinner. Where You're did right. you get the dress? It's <laughs> <laughs> all well, in you. <laughs> the dress was, was a Las Vegas uh, treat to myself when I retired from uh, Sunrise Hospital, and then went to California to Kaiser, and I paid three thousand dollars in 1964. Wow. Wow. It, it is a cashmere sweater, individually sewed on. Every sequence is on it. Well, that's fine, <laughs> but you know, 30, 40 years later. The, the, the threads are beginning to <laughs> wear out, and Carol, poor Carol, had to go behind me 
and with the backups. <laughs> all, all of the, the black and the sequins, uh, silver, I don't dare uh, put it on too often. Well, tell about the zipper. <laughs> well, I had my neighbor. <laughs> Claudia. Would you zip me up? Yeah. Oh, so I went zipping this morning. Claudia came yeah. over to zip me up. <laughs> and this was the last yeah. night of yeah. Slits Bay. So Claudia came over to zip me up, and that was great. I got to the party, and everything went fine, and I stood most of the time. I very seldom sat because I was not too sure whether I'd have any sequins left on the seat or not. <laughs> And then the party was over, and I had to go home. And I'm thinking, how am I going to get out of this? So I go to the front desk, and there's the nicest young man at the front desk. And I said to him, would you do me a favor? I said, would you come around to the door for just a second? And he looks at me, you know, kind of funny. He says, sure. So he comes around to the door, he opens the door. I said, Unzip me and let me get get out of here fast. <laughs> 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 with the Mafia. And I know a lot of people would say, oh my God, no. But they were awful good to me. It was World War II. I never wanted for white stockings. I never, and I was just a nurse for them. I never wanted for electrical appliances. I never wanted for anything. And I would take care of them and I'd come out of the, the bedroom, or out of the... Uh, <laughs> Stories. <laughs> 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 
A lot of them. <laughs> so, you're saying we shouldn't mess with you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Except that most of them are gone. Now, people say you should write a book, but I would never do that to them. It, it's, um, uh, there are still a couple of, of the folks that are alive today. Uh, not too many. Uh, I, I can only think of one right now in Las Vegas that's still alive. And we still keep in touch. And in, in, when I say keep in touch, it's it, it, now that I'm moving, I send an email out and say, hey, I'm leaving for Montana. I'll see what happens in Montana. Who knows? Who knows who lives up there? <laughs> <laughs> who was it you lived next door to in Hawaii? Oh, well, that was, oh, well, that was uh, uh, Christy Brinkley and Billy Joel. Yeah, yeah. She's, she knows those yeah. people too. Well, yeah. Christy yeah. and Billy lived directly across the street from me in uh, Hawaii. Uh, Hawaii, but that, that's musical again. And yeah. It was a lot of fun. It, it has been a great ride. I can't say anything else. I have had a hell of a ride. <laughs> So Barbara takes them aside and says, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and so, of course, he loves you. And, and then you send them over to your house. Just help yourself. Just whatever's in the, the fridge. And get you know. <laughs> So anyway, do not have you here when I come down so I can talk with you. I can gossip with you. I can, you know, we talk about the most wonderful things. So I'm really going to miss you. It's not going to be the same. But anyway. Bon voyage, it'll be a wonderful new life and a new wonderful adventure. Right? Who's going to live next to you? It is. Right. It's going to be great. That's right. Yeah. We want you to tell us stories. Keep in touch with us and keep us advised of stories from Montana because we know you never met a stranger in your life. And you're going to have a, a room like this full of friends before the first month is over. So we're, we want you to let us know how you're doing. And we're all coming to see you. Let's make games right now. <laughs> oh, with Larry? Oh, she wants to wrap it up. So yeah, yeah. Another, another party to go to. You know, Barb, Barb generally is in charge. Her <laughs> party. I had to make notes. And I think everybody should just raise their glass to a toast. And it says, we need to get uh, a glass for Barb. Oh, yeah. I am, I'm getting a glass for Barb uh -oh, and for Mary. Where'd it go? It's over there. Rich? Where, where right it? there. <coughs> okay. Right so, right well, right. I, let me put it. It's, it's like it's singing. Yeah. Yeah. Let me put a little bit of white wine here. So I originally met Barb in Hawaii in the 1990s before she came to Oregon. It's tough to get good help. <laughs> So if we could raise our glasses and have a toast to Barb. I've written out something here that's kind of special. We at Hawaiian Airlines, no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mana Nui Loa. Which means for all our hearts. Hello, goodbye, and I love you. Well, many of you know that tomorrow is Barb's actual birthday. Uh, Brooke's going to do that. Okay. So, um, in honor of her birthday, I have a little 
song I'm going to sing for you a cappella. That's for your birthday, and it's a sing along, so you can. And you're going to know the song. After, after I do the verse, you're going to know the song. And I want you to join in. The and uh, then Brooke will bring a cake out and we'll sing happy birthday. And then we have Brooke, uh, Brooke's beautiful carrot cake. So, we have a fire hand. so here's your song. <clears throat> now that it's your birthday, I don't know what to do. I can't give you a Porsche or a penthouse with a view. I can't even buy a little present. I'm much too broke, you'll find. But there is one way we may save the day. And I sure hope you don't mind. We can't give you anything but love. Barbara, that's the only thing we let me of. Barbara, dream a while, steal a while, you're sure to find happiness. And I guess all those things you always dreamed of, gee, it's great. To see you looking swell, Barbara. Diamond bracelets, Walgreens, Walgreens, Woolworths doesn't sell, Barbara. Till that lucky day, you know darn well, Barbara. I can't give you anything. We can't give you anything. We can't give you anything but love. Okay. Happy birthday. some money with this video. <laughs> Okay, 
This is a little like a time stack.